Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about a minimization problem in one of my Calculus 1 classes. And in this problem, which in my, was in my math lab, we're told that a wire is B units long and is cut into two pieces. One piece is bent into an equilateral triangle and the other is bent into a circle. We're asked if the sum of the areas enclosed by each part is a minimum, what is the length of each part? So first let's draw a picture so we can visualize what's going on. So I have this wire that is B units long and we're going to break the wire into two pieces. So I don't know how long each piece is going to be. But let's go ahead and call this left side X is varying. Then what's left is going to be B minus X units. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the piece of the wire that's X units long and we're going to form an equilateral triangle by bending it. And so the length of each side of this equilateral triangle will be a third of X, so X over three. And then we're also going to form a circle by bending our wire. And this circle has a circumference equal to B minus whatever X was. And what we want to do is to use this information to write an expression for the area of the triangle and the area of the circle, and then find the total area by adding those two together and minimize that function that results. So let's start with the equilateral triangle and I'm going to find the height of the equilateral triangle so that I can use the formula that the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. I know the base, the whole base is X over three. So half the base is X over six. And that's important because by dropping a perpendicular divided this equilateral triangle into two right triangles. So I can, find the height using the Pythagorean theorem. Our two legs are x over six squared and h squared, and those add up to the hypotenuse, which is x over three squared. So our hypotenuse squared is gonna be x squared over nine minus x squared over 36. Getting a common denominator then, we have four x squared minus x squared over 36 equals our height squared. So our height squared is 3x squared over 36, which reduces to x squared over 12. By the way, this x and my height is going to be a positive number too. So my height is going to be the positive square root of x squared over 12, which will be x over the square root of 12, which you can also write as two root three. Okay, so the area of the triangle then is going to be equal to one half times the base, which was x over three, times the height, which is x over two root three. So the area of our equilateral triangle in terms of x would be x squared over 12 root three. Now let's talk about the area of the circle. To find the area of a circle, we need to use the fact that the area is equal to pi r squared. That means that we need to know the radius to come up with an expression for the area a, but we know the circumference is b minus x. Circumference is two pi times the radius. So solving for the radius, we have r equals b minus x over two pi. So now we can plug that into our area formula. So we have area equals pi times, and then we have b minus x over two pi quantity squared. So this is the area of our circle. Okay, so let's multiply this out first. So we're gonna have pi times, and then we're gonna have b squared minus two bx plus x squared. Okay, over four pi squared. Now one of those pi's is going to cancel. And so, and let's divide each part out. So we have b squared over four pi, and we have negative two bx over four pi, which is gonna be minus bx over two pi, and then plus x squared over four pi. All right, so we have these two pieces to our total area function. We have the area of the triangle, 
and we have the area of the circle. So let's add those together and we'll have this function that represents the total area and it's what we want to minimize. We want to minimize the sum of the areas. So our area function for the total area is going to be x squared over 12 root 3 plus we'll have b squared over 4 pi. Remember that b is just a constant. It's the same as if we had 5 squared there. Minus bx over 2 pi plus x squared over 4 pi. So how do we minimize a function? Well, we normally would take the derivative, make a sign chart, look for a change in the sign. But in this case, notice that second degree polynomial function is gonna be a parabola and the coefficient of the x squared is positive. So that means it's gonna be upwards opening parabola. So where we find that the derivative is equal to zero will be the minimum for this function. So we don't really need a sign chart. We can just find the first derivative and set it to zero and find what x value makes that happen. That's nice because we have this unknown constant b in there, so we can't really make a sign chart. So anyway, let's find the first derivative. So taking the derivative of x squared over 12 root three, you're gonna have two x over 12 root three plus b squared over four pi, remember b is a constant, so b squared over four pi is a constant also, so the derivative is zero, minus the derivative of a number times x is just the coefficient, the number, so in this case, that's just gonna be b over two pi, plus here we have to bring the two out front and use the power rule again, so two x over four pi, Let's reduce a little bit. So a prime is it's gonna be x over six root three, reducing there, minus b over two pi plus x over two pi. So now we want to set this equal to zero and find the x value that makes it zero and that will be the minimum uh, area. We're gonna uh, multiply through by a common denominator, so that would be uh, six pi root three on both sides to clear out those fractions. But it's just gonna be zero on the left. So we're gonna have zero equals, distributing it to the first term, we're gonna have pi x minus, so distributing six pi to negative v over two pi, we're going to have minus three root three b plus distributing it here, we'll have three root three x. So now we wanna leave the x's on one side and move the b to the other. So we'll have three root three b equals pi x plus three root three x. Remember we're solving for x, b is a fixed length, it's not a variable, we're not solving for it. We just wanna find what x is equal to, so I'm gonna factor out the x since it appears in two terms, and that's gonna leave behind in parentheses pi plus three root three equals three root three b. Now we're gonna divide on both sides, so x is going to be three root three b over pi plus three root three. All right, so if Let's go back to the drawing at the beginning and see what we found. We just found that what x is equal to. We also need to know, because we want the length of each part, we need to know what b minus x is equal to. So let's find b minus x as well. So x is equal to three root three b over pi plus three root three. So b minus x would be b minus three root three b over pi plus three root three. And we're gonna need to get a common denominator there. So we're gonna have b times pi plus three root three over pi plus three root three minus three root three b over the same denominator. Okay, so I just multiplied the b on the top and the bottom by the common denominator pi plus three root three. Distribute the b through and you're gonna see that you're gonna get just pi times b because three root three b minus three root three b cancels out over pi plus three root three. So that is the other segment. So this is the length of one side 
and this is the length of the other. I noticed in my math lab that they, for some reason, I'm not sure why, because uh, maybe just the way they worked out their algebra, I'm not sure. It's just an equivalent form. If you multiply, you'll have three times three B, so that would be nine B over, in the denominator you'll have pi times the square root of three plus nine. So this is just another equivalent way of writing the same expression. And you could do the same thing with uh, the b minus x expression here. So I just want to make sure you know there are, there are different ways this could be written. There's no one right way. All right, so you might see the other piece written like this. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it and give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.